Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal, and oh crap, my voice is hurting again. But, this is going to be two out of three of the parts for this one, what if. And, <clears throat> last night when I recorded the other what if, because I slept a while, my voice, I woke up and my voice was completely hoarse. It's been... Three hours since I woke up, so my voice has gotten a little bit better, because I haven't spoken a single word. Hi, Leo. But I'm going to get through this one. I'm going to post it for you guys, because I know you guys will enjoy this one. So in the last part, the blood gods return just happened. So, <laughs> yes, Leo. The blood god has returned. Are you a follower? Followers don't do that. No, they don't do that. They don't ruin people's blankets. My cat's not a follower. Well, the government has been overthrown in the short time that she's been awake. And it's been 14 years since the incident. Everybody in canon age is canon age now. And if you guys say Aizawa's 24 in canon or 20s, change that. He was four when the grandfather when his grandfather told him the story. He's uh, 24 when the story hap when the last part happens, and now he's 38. So Nezu does not is not a follower. All Blood Quirk users are followers by the curse, apparent curse of. The blood quirks. And so we go to UA. And this beautiful woman's walking through the gates. And all of a sudden she's like, who the hell is she? And she looks like she just turned 20. And she pulls out a flask. A flask that most people think, oh, there's alcohol in that. And she drinks it because she's getting hungry. So she drinks it and she continues walking. And she walks all the way to 1A. And she walks in and she sees her class that she's going to be teaching. And she goes, okay. Who here has a blood quirk? And the only one who heard her was Toga. Because Toga's in this class. And she raised her hand saying, I do. Wait. That voice. And Toga turns around and sees her and then immediately starts groveling. And she goes, don't worry, don't worry. You don't have to do that. Here, I'm just a teacher. Out there, on the other hand, I'm the ruler. But let's get back onto the topic. And everybody's looking at Toga like, what, what the hell? The scariest girl in class is now bowing to her. What? And they all look at her and... Mineta's like, beautiful. And Mineta in this one, Aoyama, uh, Mineta, Kaminari, uh, Aoyama, Bakugo have all changed personality. Bakugo is actually the personality of a true hero. And <laughs> Aoyama is less creepy. And Mineta is not a pervert. He still is a slight pervert, but not a complete, uh, an utter, utter shameless pervert. So, <laughs> we go to the test. Everybody gets canon except for Bakugo. Bakugo gets better than canon, because he, she's changed the rules that everybody can use their quirks whenever, but if any harm comes to another or civilian, they have the heroes and um, cops alike have the authority to punish depending on how bad the harm or situation is. So if you're defending yourself, you have complete and total right to do so. And then you must give evidence to show that you're defending yourself, like in court of law here in America. If you're defending yourself, you can win a court of law if you have enough evidence to show that you are. And 
in these 14 years, she has become the high table of sorts. And if anybody knows the John Wick storyline, the high table is the ruling body over everything. And she is the high table, and she's like, I don't really care for very much. Just that everything is orderly by making chaos. Because her allowing normal people to use their quirks in public created chaos. And through that chaos, people are like, okay, the rule is, if you hurt anybody, you're going to get punished. But if you don't hurt anybody, then you're not punished. And so we go back to the test, and Bakugo got gets further than Cannon. He gets 856.3 meters. And by the by the way, guys, thank you for getting me to 666 subscribers while I was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so Toga gets up there and says may I use my quirk? And she goes, hmm, sure. And she just takes a knife out from behind her, and it's a blood red knife, and he's like, where the hell is she keeping that? Because she's still in her dress. She never takes her dress off. And she just cuts her arm and goes, for my number five, you get a taste. And Toga's eyes widen, and she goes, Thank you. And everybody looks at Toga being like, what's going on? And she drips some blood into a cup that she formed out of blood. So, And she solidified the blood, but she'll definitely uh, drink that blood back. And Toga takes a sip and her quirk transforms her into a copy of Victoria. And she is a exact copy, except for the eyes. The eyes are normal eyes on Toga. Victoria's eyes are cat-like eyes with the slit down the center. And she goes, okay, I shall go now. And she picks up a ball and she cocks her arm back. And everybody's like, oh, her quirk's not that impressive. And she breaks the sound barrier like five times. <laughs> and Victoria goes, good job. Now, everybody else, you suck. And she looks at Baku and goes, you are different. And he goes, uh, okay. Okay. And she goes, meet me in my office later today. I want to talk to you. And he goes, okay. Um, that's creepy, but sure. And she looks at Toga and says, your training has gone well. I expect you to train even harder now. And she goes, yes, ma'am. And everybody sees Toga, the scary person in class, with the strongest quirk in class. Be respectful to her, to her. So like, yeah, we're not dealing with her. No, no, no. And there's a girl hiding in the back of the class. And she has a cat quirk. And she's just curled up in a ball being like, please don't come near me. Please don't come near me. Please don't come near me. And Victoria has noticed her the entire time. And she goes... Hey, Gakure, come to my office after class, too. And Toga's like, uh, okay, that's strange, but she's the god. What can we do? So we go to the, her office after class, and Hagakure walks in, and she stands in the, the center of the room. Bakugo walks in. He stands, and she goes, please, have a seat. This isn't a threatening call. This isn't a thing to tell you that you suck, which you do for right now. But this is a proposition. 
And this proposition says, if you join my army, and Baka goes, whoa, 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 your army. And she goes, yes, my army. You'll get trained like Toga. And he goes, who the hell are you? And how the hell do you have an army? And she goes, oh, my name? You guys can just call me Victoria. But once I walk out the door, though, and she points at the gate of UA. Once I walk there, out there, her eyes darken to a brighter, uh, darken to a more crimson red. Her hair shortens and her armor comes up. She says, I'm the blood god. And Baka goes, oh, crap. So I was like, yeah, yes, ma'am. And she goes, oh, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you. And she transforms back into her beautiful form. And she goes, I am here to give you an offer. This offer is to join my army to be the bringers of chaos. So in this chaos, there could be order. And Marco goes like, what do you mean, bringing chaos to have order? And she goes, well, without order, there'd be chaos, right? And he goes, yes, without chaos, there would be order. And he goes, what? And she goes, the balance of chaos and order is a fickle thing, and... Normal people like you and Higakure here are very special. You are, quote-unquote, normal by you not being a fanatic of the blood god. And they go, yeah, um... And she goes, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm, I'm not here to make you a fanatic. I, I honestly hate fanatics. They're, they're just so tiring. Ugh. And he goes, uh, okay. And she says, what I'm here to do is get you into the mindset of the fanatics. Because they have the right mindset. It cause chaos here. The other side makes order there. And I personally love when there's order. I personally love when there's also chaos. I don't love it when it's out of order. And they feel this pressure when she said, out of order. And they go, okay. And she goes, that's why I have rules for the classroom. And did you see them when you walked in? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, good. That's never leaving the door. Once you walk into my classroom, you follow those rules and you don't get hurt. And he goes, oh, oh, okay. And she goes, good, good. Now, will you join? Or not. And Hagakure goes, what, what, what will you do when we join? And she goes, oh, nothing much. I'll just make you a immortal. Um, I'll make you a super powerful being that most people can't stop. But the downside is you'll also become a vampire. And she goes, uh, uh, but. And she goes, oh, don't worry, don't worry. It's not something special like me biting you, draining all your blood. Um, and she lists all these ways that the traditional ja uh, vampire stories that say vampires are um, transmitted. No, no, no. She goes, all you have to do is drink a drop of my blood and my quirk because technically i am the first quirk person and they go what what do you mean you're the quirk first quirk and she goes oh yeah the news never said the leader of the blood god the cult or fanatic group whatever you guys fucking call it goddamn church at this point and she breaks character a little and she starts cursing and saying that her damn followers are so damn reckless and Baka's like, um, okay. 
And she goes, sorry, I lost my cool for a second. But my followers are a little crazy at points. But other points, they have the right ideas. And Azala gets up out of a cat out of caterpillar mode and says, would you like me to go fetch them? And she goes, sure. And he goes, right away. And they go, wait, 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 you have a hero under your belt? And she goes, no, no, no. He's one of my followers. But he's the only one I like because he's not fanatic. And he appears again because he's super, he has super speed because he was transformed into a vampire. He, she transformed the top five into vampires. And Stain, Toga, and who else? Who else? Aizawa all appears saying, we are here for your um, use. And she goes, good, good, good. Um, well, Aizawa here is the absolute cancel servant. She points at Toga and says, the chameleon. And she points at Stain saying, the executioner. Now I need a brute and I need a spy. And they go, but you already have a chameleon. And she goes, yes, yes, yes. But this spy is not any normal spy. They could be in a room and and I quote this from a line from a idiotic person on this thing called the internet. I think his name the unsmooth criminal. Um, scare the shit out of someone. And that's the end of the quote. Uh, I think that sums up what I was trying to go for. And Agarker goes, I, I, I could do that very well. And she goes, yes, yes, I know. Now, Bakugo, my question is, do you want to become the brute? Your strength will increase. You'll be stronger than All Might. And you'll be able to regenerate from any damage. And he goes, can I think about it? And she goes, yes, yes, you can think about it. And she turns to Hagakure and goes, would you like to be the spy? And she goes, hmm. Can I do what I like when I'm not in service? And she goes, yes, yes, I, I don't care what you do as long as you... Follow my orders when I ask you to. And she goes, hmm. It's very tempting. Can I think about it also? And she goes, yes, yes. You have until the USJ, which is in a month. And they go, okay. And she says, at the USJ, I'll turn you guys into the brute and spy if you guys want. And they go, okay. Actually, yeah, Hagakure is the spy, Toga is the chameleon, Aizawa is the Hold on, I need to think of that this in uh, Borderlands terms. So, Hagakure is zero. Toga is Zane, I think. No. Yeah, Toga is Zane. Aizawa is... Hmm. Who is Aizawa? Um... Aizawa is like Maya. Like Maya, not 
with the abilities of Maya. And Stain is Krieg. While if if I let it if I well Baka goes like brick. Yeah. So <laughs> we skip to the heroes versus villains, and she walks into class and goes While I'm here, I'm under strict orders not to pull my weight around. <sighs> well, I'm going to be shadowing this, and you're going to have a new teacher for this. This is a week later after the first day, and you go, okay, and Baku walks up to her and says yes, and then walks away, and she goes, okay, understandable. And they're like, uh, what, what, what? And Baku sits back down, and Hagakure, he just nods, and she nods back to Hagakure and goes, okay. Everybody but Higakure and Bakugo. You will be going with the man right up, right outside the door. He goes, I'm coming through the door like a hero! And she goes, I really hate that I left him alive. I really wish he died that day, but nope. Someone had to already been his successor. But at least this person now is a lot better than him. And she looks at this man and goes, So, you, sir, are who again? And she goes, I am Lamillion. And she goes, Yes, yes, Lamillion. Um,. And why? He goes, I am the new symbol of peace after the tragic end of All Might. And she goes, yes, 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 we, we know. Um, but why did you just do what you did? And he goes, because I'm a hero. And she goes, yeah, no. No, you're not. Heroes aren't flashy. And he goes, yeah. They're not. And he just goes serious for a second and he goes, Heroes aren't flashy. Well, some are, but some aren't. There's heroes where they have good quirks, then there's heroes that have bad quirks, and he points to the sleeping bag behind them behind him and says, This hero right here, he has a very, very, very villainous quirk, but he still uses it as a hero. And he goes, Unless I'm ordered by my god. Which then I use it as intended by my god. And then he goes back to sleep. And he goes, yes, yes, yes. Um, and he points at her and says, Miss Victoria, can I explain your quirk? And she goes, mm, sure, go ahead. And he goes, her quirk's name is Blood God. And Toga and Aizawa both yell at the same time, Blood for the blood god! Skulls for the skull throne! And everybody is like, what What the hell? And he goes, yes, yes, very, very good. But her quirk is a very, very villainous, villainous quirk because she is a legitimate vampire in this sort of sense. And she goes, yes, yes, I've already told them that. And they are going, uh, yeah, we know, um, what else? And he goes, well, the more... And she's linked to a certain object, that this object can't be touched unless it's her. Or it will just move away from them. And she goes, yes, yes, my throne. And she pulls her hand up, and this throne comes bursting out of the ground, and she sits down on it and goes, yes, yes, we all know about it. And they go, the hell just happened and Aizawa gets out of his sleeping bag and bows and respectfully asks may I leave and she goes yes yes and Toga does the same and she goes yes yes and Toga goes to the changing room with her box and everybody's like um okay and he goes 
Well, with that sort of display, she has all the abilities of a vampire. So super speed, super strength, super hearing, super sight, super smell. She goes, I lost out on taste. And he goes, okay, that's a new one for me. I haven't heard that one yet, but apparently she lost out on taste. So the only flavor that she likes is blood. She goes, no, no, no. Um, I do like that thing called rum. That's really sweet. I like that. Um, but I have no, it has no effect on me. Uh, and he looks at her and goes, okay. And he goes, so you like rum? And she goes, yes, yes. And he goes, okay. And he pulls out something that he had, he's saved for a little girl that he's trying to save. And she goes, oh, don't, don't give me that. That's for someone else. And he goes, well, you might like it. it it's like rum. And she goes, what? He goes, yes. It, rum is just literal sugar in a liquid form. And she goes, no. Rum is an alcohol. And he goes, yes, but rum is a sugar in liquid form. And this is a sugar in a solid form. And this is a lot of sugar in this solid form. And this is a child's favorite treat. So I wanted to see if you'd like it. And I have multiple of them. And she goes, oh, and by the way, one of my followers is in that group, so I could probably just get you in and get her out immediately. And he goes, that would be a great help. Can we set that meeting up later? And she goes, yes, yes. And he goes, okay. Well, let's get back on topic. And this throne, and he points at the chair that she's sitting at, is made out of bones. And the base of the throne, and she goes, I will only summon one level. Don't worry. And she snaps her fingers, and the ground starts to shake violently, and I, the skulls start to pop out of the ground, and it's like a, a one layer of skulls underneath this throne. And she goes, this is the first layer of skulls. And he goes, no matter what kind of animal, no matter what kind of creature, if it has a skull... And you could take it out of its skeleton and put it on this, or yeah, on this pile of skulls that is connected to the throne, or you bury it in the middle of the woods alone without the body, it will be sent to the chair. And she goes, throne. You sorry, throne. It'll be sent to the throne. And the more skulls she has, the stronger she is. And she has how many? And she goes, 5.6 billion skulls. And he goes, um, okay. And she goes, that includes dinosaur skulls too. And he goes, why would you need dinosaur skulls? And she goes, well, I could and she explains the rest of her quirk, and she goes, I can control blood. I can summon things with blood. I can make things with blood. I can congeal blood. And she says all these things that she can do with blood, and she says, I also can transform into people using blood. And they go, okay. And she goes, and the dinosaur skulls help with one item. And she pulls out a raptor skull, and she cuts her finger and this blood starts leaking out and it forms a small little raptor. And she goes, I can make little raptors. Or, if you guys want to get more technical, I could recreate dinosaurs. And she drops the raptor and it starts running around the classroom at super, at super speeds. And I'm like, what the hell's happening? And the million goes, oh, crap. Um, everybody, here's your costume. Then he clicks a button and the uh, thing comes out and the raptor runs into the thing and the skull drops on the ground and Bakugo tries to grab it. And she goes, oh, don't you dare touch that skull. And he goes, uh, I was going to put it back on your throne. And she goes, oh, you don't need to. 
in three, two, one. And they see these like claw bones come out of the ground and grab the skull and suck it back into the ground. The ground seems to heal after that. I'm like, what the hell just happened? And she goes, oh, if a skull is lost in the middle of a battlefield, well, or in the middle of a field, and it hasn't been touched by anybody in five seconds, it will immediately return to my throne. And if it's touched by somebody, the skull will disintegrate and I'll lose it forever. But if someone picks a skull off of my throne, it will disintegrate and reform on my throne. And she says, Lemillion, would you like to demonstrate? And he goes, sure. So he goes up to the top of the throne and goes, watch. And he pulls the top skull off so it stays symmetrical because she's a very OCD freak. And he found that out by accidentally pulling a skull off. She goes, God damn it, put it back. And he pulled the center middle skull off and says in five, four, and he steps off the throne. He goes three, two, one, and the skull disintegrates and the dust starts flying around and it goes, oh God, I hate this part. And it feels like something super strong hit him in the face and he goes flying into a wall and he goes, oh God, that hurt. And she goes, oh, that is a kind of self-defense mechanism for my throne. Um, well, let's continue with this training exercise. And he goes, yes, yes, everybody get outside. I think Toga and Aizawa are there already. And she goes, they are. I'll be there and waiting. And he goes, okay. Um, everybody outside after you get changed. And everybody has canon costumes except for Momo. She has a costume made out of her own hair. <laughs> And so does Hagakure, and, um, who else, who else, who else? Uh, Toga does, too. But she also has a gas mask on. Because in her quirk state, she can't breathe. But she can talk, and, her, and the mouth moves. So if she uses the gas mask, she can breathe, but can't talk or someone will notice that something's off see it's kind of a win-win for them but she walks up to toga and goes go one percent on them and toga goes yes ma'am and she walks up to aiza and says did you get it and aiza says yes ma'am and he pulls out a crimson red sleeping bag and it has the designs and patterns of the skull thrown on it. And she goes, good, good. And she summons the skull thrown and she sits on it with, while in the sleeping bag and goes, ah, oh, comfy. And passes out promptly. And Lamillion goes, well, um, let's, let's see your guys' power. And he immediately gets slammed in the face by a skull. And he goes, sorry. Oh, God, that hurts. And they look at him and go, but you could phase through it. And he goes, I tried. And he walks over to the skull throne while she's sitting on it. And he activates his quirk. And he shows that his hand can go through his head. And he tries putting his head through her throne and it won't work. And he walks back over and says, all skulls attached to this throne are not able to be touched by quirks. Or they are at least able to be touched by quirks, but quirks have pretty much no effect on them. So, and she gets up and yawns and she goes, now get on with the fighting already. Trying to sleep with nothing around me is so boring. And they go, uh, yes ma'am. And they start doing the test. Everybody go gets to cannon. Except for Toga, who's the 21st person in class. And Toga is put against Bakugo and Hagakure. with 
Hiroshima and Mina accompanying them. And they're like, okay, why is it four against one? And she goes, that's to give you guys a chance. Oh, crap. So Toka goes, may I use it? And she goes, no. Show them your power. And Toga goes, yes, ma'am. And so Toga just beats their ass with fist, uh, just normal fists, no quirk. And at the USJ, because we're skipping to the USJ, Bakugo and Hagakure have been turned into the five servant vampires. So they have Stain, Aizawa, Toga, Bakugo, and Hagakure. And Hagakure's quirk evolved when she was given the blood. And now if she drinks someone's blood, she can control them. Completely. And Bakugo's quirk evolved. If he drinks someone's blood, he can make their entire body explode. Just a spontaneous boom. But it's got to be fresh blood, too. It can't be the old blood that she got when she first woke up. So that's the downside of them being vampires. So the USJ attack happens. And instead of anybody getting injured, she just goes down and says, Azawa, tell Nezu I'm sorry. And he goes, yes, ma'am. And he says, everybody, out. And everybody's like, okay. And they start leaving. And Kirkyu's like, we can't let you leave. We need to stop Lemillion. And she goes, Lemillion's not your problem. And she appears in front of Kirkyu and says, I'm your problem. And he's like, what can a little girl like you do? And she goes, I'm not just any ordinary little girl. And her eyes change from bright red to crimson and her clothes start to change from a nice pretty dress to armor and he goes ah oh, crap and he's about to say teleport back to his to shigaraki but his head's already on the ground the blood's already out out of his body and she goes the intent to harm me and my students and plus you're a dead body you're no fun. But she t basically teleports back to the bottom and says, the intent to harm me and my students gives me permission to kill you. And they go, you are you can't kill, you're a hero. And she goes, do you not remember when the blood got awoken? And he goes, um, and Toka goes, ah, oh, Shiggy, hey. And she waves at Shigaraki and he goes, Toga? And Dobby appears going, wait, Toga, where? And he sees Toga and she's just waving hi to them. And he goes, Toga, what are you doing? And she goes, um, um, and she's just looking around and wondering what to say. And she goes, and someone appears in front of him and says, I'll give you a proposition. Your name is Toya, right? And his eyes widen, going, How the hell do you know my name? And she goes, I'm very special. And plus, I cut you. I can see everything about you. And he goes, What do you mean? And she goes, When I see a drop of blood, I see someone's life through it. I see their life and I see their future. And he goes, uh, uh, Okay. Um, she goes, Don't worry, don't worry. I don't see death in your immediate future. Unless you somehow decline me, and then, well, Toga's just gonna be sad then. And he plays to his like for Toga, and she goes, So, I have a proposition for you. You come and join Class 1A, and I will not kill you. And he goes, Why would I join Class 1A? And she goes, Because. You're a vigilante, not a villain. And he goes, 
Maybe. And she goes, oh, no, 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 definitely. Your hatred for your own father is what drove you to be a villain. Slash vigilante thing. And she gestures her hands weirdly. And she goes, well, I'll give you till these guys are dead. And she basically darts around killing all the low-level thugs and says, okay, all the thugs are dead. What's your answer? And he goes, if you can bring me Endeavor's head for what he did to his family. And she goes, oh, no, no. I could do you better than that. I can bring his skull. And he goes, what do you mean? She goes, I already killed his ass. And he goes, what? And she goes, yeah. Um, you're never supposed to treat family like that. And one little cut to him showed me all of his bad deeds. So, And she summons her skull throne and says, I'm going to say that the top five skulls are the biggest assholes I've ever met. And number one was your father. And she picks up the skull and says, I released this skull from my protection. And she hands it to Dobby. And he goes, oh, uh, what did you just do? And she goes, proof. If you want to know proof, you take that to a um, DNA specialist. And he will tell you that it's Endeavor's. And he goes, okay, I'll do that. And he walks to the door and just walks out. And Shoto here heard the entire thing. Shoto Todoroki is a female in this one. And she heard the entire thing. And Victoria basically goes, uh, goes in front of Shoto in a split second and says, don't worry, you'll be back. And she basically goes back in front of Shigaraki and says, Now, what have you done? And she takes the tiny knife that she has in her hand, that's a very small blood knife that she throws it, and it hits him in the side of the face, just a tiny scratch, and she sees his entire life. And she goes, Oh, you poor creature. And he's going, you cheated, you cheated, you cheated. And she goes, you damn poor creature. So she just knocks him out. Because at this point, he has not killed anybody. So she just knocked him out and said, now, that all, everybody is out that is act that it died that actually is a criminal. Aizawa. And he goes, yes, ma'am. And he goes, she goes, okay. Put all their skulls on my throne. And he goes, bottom or top level? And she goes, eh. Bottom. And he goes, yes, ma'am. And she goes, oh, crap. I gotta summon it. And so she pulls her hand up. and It was just the throne at first. And this rumbling started. And it started to grow and grow. And bones just started to erupt from everywhere and roll towards the throne. And it's pushing the throne up and up and up. Until it's a mountain of skulls and a single throne on the top. And everybody sees this and goes, holy crap. And I'm going to leave the rest of it. I'm going to leave it off here. Because my throat's starting to hurt again. And I'll probably have the 666 special later. So, if you guys want the 666 special, yes. That's all I'm going to say. Yes. Talk to you guys later.